Yeah, it's day five. I'm checking in. I have my thin pork chops that I have washed off and I need to season. And then I have my onions that I mix that I cut up because I'm gonna make my kids um some other pork chops and I'm gonna keep it low carb and then just allow them to have some rice with theirs. And obviously if I was to eat it I would just skip the rice and probably do um mashed cauliflower or just the vegetables because you don't you know um sometimes just the meat and the veggies is enough especially when you have gravy i always find that gravy makes me forget about <laughs> about my starch component to a meal so that i am like i talked about the jicama sticks so what i'm doing now is boiling them because i find that like i told you guys i'm going to be making um a riff on fries with those and I found that they um, the texture isn't all the way there like I said I'll usually par cook them or twice fry them or that's what I've done in the past and that worked out pretty well but I'm trying something new and going ahead and boiling them just to get them a little softer and then um, I'm probably gonna you know keep them in the freezer because as you can see on the container even though I was impatient I went ahead and bought them in their best um, by the tent and like I said my fast is going to continue a little longer than I initially planned so I'm going to go ahead and boil those up and then when they get a little softer I'm going to probably put them into a, a bag and freeze them. Onion powder, I have my black pepper, I have a huge thing of um, Kirkland Himalayan pink salt this doubles for me as also a part of my electrolyte drink that I like to have. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the snake diet, but he has a really good recipe for when you're fasting, keeping your electrolytes in balance. So literally night and day, the difference that you'll feel if you keep your electrolytes balanced as opposed to just plain water. But um, obviously I'm not a doctor, so you would have to talk to your doctor about that, but... I noticed a, a huge difference and I have my garlic um, I think this is just granulated garlic sometimes I get garlic powder it just depends on what I can find now I have smoked paprika and I know a lot of people say well I only put that on stuff that I want to taste smoky or like barbecue but I put it on I put it in place of paprika the flavor is not as strong as you guys might think but it does come out in certain things like in my mac and cheese it's a, it's a nice little taste that people are like oh what's that you know and so um last but not least i have my salt which is in a container container that says onion powder but that is because it is the himalayan pink salt and obviously i'm not gonna use salt out of this big huge container but I like to buy in bulk when I can. So a really hard morning, a really, really hard morning. Just really felt like just really defeated. And I did, I still don't feel hungry. So usually that would be the thing I would do. I would go stuff myself with cereal or bread or something until I felt sick and then regret it because I start to gain the weight back and then it would demotivate me and then it would just be like a never ending cycle where I would just continue to start fast after fast or this after this and never really see any results because I was always sabotaging myself when I would get upset and so the fortunate unfortunate thing about the, today was that I wasn't hungry at all, even though there is food around. I was not interested in food, so I needed something other than food to make me feel better. So I remember my friend telling me that I really inspired her. In some other words, she just said that she missed my energy. And so I went to go check out my IG, and I got really inspired again. And I, and I kind of wished I could be... Where I was then because I, I just seemed so much happier. I have put about a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of butter into this pan. And I'm gonna, going to put a little bit of this garlic. Some of the garlic I'm saving for my spinach. And then some of these very small cut up onions. 
because I'm going to do a shortcut to make the green beans that I'm making for my kids to go with their pork chops a little bit more flavorful. I did buy some fresh green beans, and but for tonight I'm just going to do this shortcut that you guys can obviously try. And I do recommend because it's really good and flavorful. And please excuse the fan because it might be pretty loud. And so I am allowing my daughter to learn how to cook. But she's not always that good about cleaning up after herself. So um, I'm going to have to run the fan because she, she hasn't cleaned this eye all the way from probably making rice. And so smoking up a little bit. I think I am going to cut up a little bit of bell peppers just for my spinach but for now I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the, um, the green beans so I'm going to put some of this bacon here and just crumble up some bacon that's fully cooked but not cooked too long so it's not super crispy and then some of these onions in here, not too much. They don't mind onions as long as they can't taste them too much. And then I'm going to get another spoon. And just take some of this. So I grab some of the garlic and I'm going to put that in too. But right now I'm going to get a wooden spoon. So I press up my my pot, but I actually went out and got myself a new wooden spoon. And the excitement of the idea of being back in the kitchen and sharing that with you guys. So as I was saying, um, she she encouraged me by saying what she said, my friend. And so I went on my Instagram and kind of got inspired. And then what was nice is that I, it, it, it also reminded me what that this was my happy place, the kitchen. It, it made me feel good. So I, I looked at how many recipes I had shared and how much I'm going to go ahead and put some pepper in here. I love black pepper. Makes me think about my grandfather. He would always put pepper in everything. He would like extra pepper. My grandma did most of the cooking, but my grandfather had a few specialties. He made, he made hog head cheese, which I'm not a fan of, but still kind of nostalgic for me because I lost my grandfather in, two, in November, I believe, of 2013. And he was like a father to me, so I was really hard and I still miss him. But, um, yeah, so... He will put black pepper and everything. I'm not going to add salt because the butter has salt and the, um, the other stuff. So I'm just going to do the pepper. Usually when I cook onions, I like to add um, salt because it gives it a lot of flavor. But the butter and the bacon should add some saltiness to that. And since it's starting to cook, I'm going to add the juice from the beans. Now you can always add water if that's what you prefer, but I'm going to just go ahead and use the juice. And then I'm going to use some of this bouillon to make it like a broth, like as if you were to cook long cooked cream beans. And... Voila! to add a bit more water using the can which I put the green beans in but I'm going to allow these to cook for a substantial amount of time a little bit longer than what I normally do for cooking these kinds of green beans just so the flavor can be infused into the green beans there's still a few in here I'm not pouring with the water because I did go a little heavy on the bouillon and I don't want them to be salty. I 
kind of tough with the holding the camera. So trust me, it's going to taste great. I went ahead and added a little bit more pepper. And I'm comfortable with the seasoning now. So I'm going to let that cook up and go have tasty green beans. And, oh yeah, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and add this much garlic. That was about a half a teaspoon, I guess. I would guess. I'm not really that good with measurements. But, my stuff usually turns out great. So. And then, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and check these and see if they're getting a little fork tender. And they are, so that's great. So I'm probably going to turn the heat off on that and just leave it in there because they're still not super, super um, tender where I think they're going to fall apart, but I think they're done cooking actively. So I went ahead and stopped that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of smoked paprika to this because, like I said, we are going for that smoky effect specifically in this because... That's why we put the bacon in it. We wanted to taste like we put smoked turkey or something in there. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn the oil on. So that it can get nice and hot. And I'm going to go ahead and season them. I'll probably show you guys as I, how I season them. But I'll be right back because I have to grab a couple more things. So I got rid of some of the mess that was in the way. And while I was here and I just spoke about the pink Himalayan so I want to share this real quick. So this is sodium free. I don't use it to cook. But I use it because it's an excellent source of potassium. Now potassium is another electrolyte that a lot of it can be lost in the process of fasting. Specifically water fasting. Because we're not eating and, and food is normally our main source for both potassium and obviously sodium. Everything we eat is full of it. So what, um, what we would normally get, we're not getting anymore. So potassium with some sodium together will usually do the trick to keep you going during the week if you're fasting. So... That's my tip, and um, obviously you have to consult your physician before you do any of that kind of stuff, but I just wanted to share that. And this is the sucralose I talked about in one of my previous videos. People have different um, opinions on sucralose, but I haven't found any research to show that it's harmful, and I found that it's the one that best works for my taste buds. I use this in conjunction with another sweetener, usually erythritol, because that one doesn't affect your um, your insulin response, your glucose, and your blood sugar. Um, I watched a video where, um, what are they called? I'll think of their name and put it in the description box, but um, they did a whole video where they, each day for about a week, I want to say, they woke up in the morning. Um, and they tested different sweeteners for how they affected their blood sugar. It was a really helpful video for me to watch. And I learned that both this and the erythritol were good options as far as your blood sugar goes. So I know that this fast is going to help because it's helping already. I haven't run to food. And I'm on day five. And I feel pretty strong. And I've night the urge well the urge isn't even there that's the funny thing but I'm in my happy place and so I'm gonna go ahead on with the seasoning so I'm gonna start with salt and then I'll probably pause it once I do this first side because you guys will kind of know what I'm getting at what I'm doing I usually start with salt and then pepper because they are the two most important and like I said I go a little heavy on the pepper so if you guys aren't big fans of pepper, then obviously season it the way you like. But if you want to use these like I do, then feel free. And then I go with the onion powder, which is another of my favorites. 
<clears throat> I sometimes hesitate to use this in like um, the flour mix if you're like breading your your um, chops this and garlic this is garlic um, granulated garlic but I'm always worried that they'll burn because these, these both can burn but I haven't really had any trouble with that so far so um, what I do do is I'll usually use the garlic only on one side of it onion powder I'm just in love with and I use it a lot so I'll come back with finish up so I put the pork chops in and I flip them over they're just about ready they're a little thicker than what the package said but they are going to cook a little bit more in the in the grape, the onion gravy so I don't need to go too far with them and I'll be so I am not at all a fan of having a burnt flavor in my food so I went ahead and added a little bit of butter to this pan so I got my onions going, they're looking good. And I got that xanthan gum in there. So I'm going to cook these until they start to all be transitioned. I did have to add butter because the oil at the bottom was a bit more burnt than I like to use. And so I went ahead and just cleaned it out for the most part. And, um, grabbed a few bits before it got too dark when I was taking the chops out and put that on my spoon until I time to put my onions in and get the green So, so I hope my onions are getting really tasty looking. So I think I'm ready to start adding my water. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with about a half a cup. And I think I'm going to end up with about a full cup. Like I said, I'm not super, um, super used to doing so much measuring measuring and I do want to make sure that, that I don't lose my flavor the water and then it thickens up for me with the sand thing down so I'm gonna head and add the rest of the water so you wanna have enough gravy because I believe the sand thing will start to kick in and make it a little thicker I apologize for getting out of focus. My videos, I hope, will start to get a lot better quality when I can link up my schedule with my daughter so she can be my camera woman some of the times and then I can get some more equipment or something so that I can make better quality videos. But for now, who wouldn't love some other pork chops they can be eating on? A low carb, balanced, or keto meal plan and still be delicious. So, in my opinion, you can never have enough pepper. I did add a little bit of salt when I was in the, the cooking the onions. Even though I didn't think I would need too much, I did add a little bit. So, I'm just going to add the, a little bit of more onion powder and a little bit more um, paprika, mostly for color, but also for flavor. You guys have basically seen the entire meal. I'm going to have to get my kids after this, and then I'll check back in to kind of finish telling you guys. Um, well, kind of finish just checking in with you guys. I'm hoping to start getting some feedback soon. I know my channel is really new, but I would love to hear some feedback. 
and some ideas for things that I could help you guys out with by, you know, answering some questions or anything like that, or requests for things that you guys might want me to keto fi or make low carb or anything like that, because that's right up my alley. And then, but if you guys can see that, it's starting to really thicken up. It reminds me of cornstarch the way that it, it, it reacts, which is something that I, I would use a lot, like I would do like a cornstarch slurry a lot of the time <clears throat> for my gravy because I, when I was younger I liked really thick gravy, but as I got older I kind of liked it in between, so I'll be back guys. I noticed that I forgot to put my garlic in, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in now. Mix it around. So here are the pork chops, <clears throat> smothered in onions and gravy, all low carb. So I put a little bit of coconut oil in the bacon I had left over from my green bean. I put up about three pieces, so I had some left over. And bacon can have a tendency to start cooking pretty fast, so I'm going to add the vegetables and the garlic. I wish I had smell of vision if you guys could smell this. And as you can see, what I said about the bacon, very true, it can start to go pretty fast, so I have to be careful with that. I might take this one piece out and let one of my kids eat it. One of the ones who likes the crispier kinds of bacon. And the vegetables will obviously slow that process back down. You know. But once the sauciness of that and the oil, all those flavors start to get together, then it will smell nice. So I cut everything up pretty small because it was my intention for it to cook pretty quickly. The spinach cooks very quickly. And so I'm going to take this opportunity as it starts to wither to add a bit of seasoning to it. So I'm add a little bit of salt. Not too much. Some pepper. Paprika. Because I love it. <laughs> and a little bit of onion powder. Because I love some of those. And a deviation that I made early on in keto was that I'm not super um, OCD about my veggies. So even though it didn't make much, what I'm left off with is a very savory, delicious addition to any meal. You can have it on the side of some salmon or any other protein you like. You can put it with eggs. You could cut up a rotisserie chicken, a breast, and put a little, if you're going <clears throat> low fat, you can use yogurt for creaminess and then a little bit of cheese and make it up in a lavash wrap or anything like that um, make it into a dip that's what I've done with something similar in the past with like either canned chicken or rotisserie chicken that you break down but it's definitely delicious and it's definitely worth doing so that you don't have to get rid of your spinach and then before I go because I have to go get my kids I have boiled and then I bagged the hickory sticks and so they're half cooked and when I'm ready I can cut them up in thinner strips and fry them and try to make our faux fries. And then close to the five day mark and I wanted to just do a quick weigh in. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll talk to you guys next time.